All right, welcome everyone. This is Dr. Norbert calling you directly from London with another and uh, the only other semifinals game from the MCP TTS Season 12 League. Um, super excited here today because we're going to see one of these people progress into the finals. We have Diam Lord, uh, who is from Italy, also known as Lorenzo in real life, uh, against um, Trollborn, which is Wrexham90 today, uh, who is from Sweden and was one of the people on the winning Swedish WTC team. So super excited about this match. We know already that Lukas Schick from Canada is going to be the other finalist. He won his match yesterday. So it's just a matter of who's going to be playing against the Canadian. With me today is somebody from the North American scene, uh, Mike DeLuca from the Danger Room podcast and also uh, for, um, part of the WTC from the America and Freedom Force team. Say hello, Mike. Hello, listeners. <laughs> Welcome to the cast. Thank you so much for being on here and giving you your, your expert opinion as we watch this match in action. So, oh. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I lost to Torbjorn in the cuts, so... Uh, can watch that game on my YouTube channel. I'm not, I'm not shelling it. I don't actually get anything from it. But if you want to watch that game, it is there. Cool. Um, what's the um, game. He played really well. What's the um, uh, the the um? I think my. Jeez, I don't even know my my handle. Tell me how much <laughs> I try to shell it. Uh, I think it's my name. I think it's like Mike. M, I think it's M Deluca Zero. Okay. Cool. Cool. But, cool. Uh, yeah, I record all my games there. All right, let's take a look at what Trollborn has brought along with him. Uh, he's got, ooh, Corvus Glaive uh, with the Reality Gem, Black Cat, Beta Ray Bill, uh, Baron Zemo, Amazing Spider-Man, Ghost Spider, Proxima Midnight, Miles Morales, Thanos with the Space Mind Gem, and Toad. Oof. This roster's a little Did bit all over the place. Me? I don't this know. Looks like my list. <laughs> Did he take your list? <laughs> <laughs> my LVO list. All right, from cool. Two years ago. And then uh, I don't know what crises they had because they've already pulled them. These guys are very eager. Uh, we have Diam Lord from Italy. He's got Beta Ray Bill, CGR, Cosmic Ghost Rider, Drax, Groot, uh, Nebula, Psylocke, Rocket Raccoon, Ronan without a gem, Star Lord. And Thanos with uh, Space Reality, Senior Thanos. So classic Guardians list with the added uh, CGR. Yeah, we saw uh, Diam Lord play Ronan last game against Curtis. Um, All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, cool. Uh, All right. Let's see what they brought along with them. So the I'm not sure who picked what yet. Uh, it looks like I'm just looking at the dice rollers. It looks like Diam Lord won the roll anyway. Uh, so we're playing uh, Hammers at 18, or else we're playing Demons Downtown. Oh, God. This is playing right into the CGR game plan here, isn't it? Uh, yeah, this is a CGR game for <laughs> sure. Uh, so there is one thing. I have found Black Order to be pretty oh. good into CGR. Uh, cryo on him and can kill him relatively easily. So you might see some... Uh... Some double Thanos CGR into Corvus action. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's so what did uh, Trollborn have? It was either Black Order or Webs, wasn't it? Correct. So I don't think Webs is going to show up with this crisis combination, would you? I doubt it, yeah. This is uh, getting lit on fire is no fun. Um, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say Black Order loves demons either, but uh, Thanos can move people around, put people on portals. And I think having the priority control into Ghost Rider will be strong. Yeah, yeah. Welcome everybody in the chat. Glad to have you along here for this special uh, edition of the of the cast. Um, <clears throat> looks like we've got uh, Kenji Let Lewis from from my metas here. Also, we've got Connor, uh, my captain from the WTC. Amazing, and Matt Alex. All right, excellent. Uh, today's map is brought to us by Pat. Ooh, this one's called the Villain's Lair. Thirty three points. A little bit on the low side. Uh, I just found out that uh, Diam Lord, um, the Guardians player, he picked uh, Secures. So the Secure is his, so that makes sense. It's the Demons. And Trollborn decided to go with 19 threats instead of uh, 18. Cool. Yeah, the big thing about 19 points is you get the 3 threat with Black Order instead of the 2 threat. He would probably be bringing Toad if it was 18. feel pretty worse about that. His Torbjorn's list has Zemo, so I, well, I would expect to see Black Order plus Zemo. Classic. So does that come out to 19 then? 
Yes. Yeah, that that is actually then the right call. So this is interesting. We probably could predict. So go ahead, since you're on a roll, who who do you think Lorenzo is going to be bringing for his 19? So 19 is actually weird for Guardians. They have to. They love Bill Ghost Cosmic Ghost Rider and the Rocket Group pair, and you can't bring all three of those with Star Lord at 19. So mm. it's like pick two. <laughs> Um, I would expect we see Bill because of incinerate immunity. Mm -hmm. And I think if I was looking down Black Order, I would probably consider not bringing Ghost Rider and bringing Rocket Groot and right. just bringing more characters. Uh, so we'll see if he if he knows that. But DM Lord also loves Thanos. And yep, being able to go with your own Thanos into Black Order is pretty strong. So if he could play like Rocket Groot, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Rocket Groot, Star-Lord, Thanos in a three threat. Rocket, Groot, Thanos, and a three threat. Okay. And Star Lord. Uh, and Star Lord, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is, uh, they switched maps because the other one was bugged, apparently. So this is a, a Pat map. Oh, it is the one I was mentioned before, Villain's Lair. So what do we have here today? We've got size three terrain here at the bottom, size three above that, size three there on the left, and a little crate on the right. And then right down the middle, oh, yes, I remember this one. Pat's so devious. Look at this. Uh, he's got these, like, you know, jumping from one to the next of these wheels, size two wheels, right down the middle. <laughs> Look, Mike. Mike's un unimpressed. <laughs> this, map, this, this map is infamously annoying to deploy on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's why he put it that way. Um, I'll mention again, we're going to do a map contest in the at the end of the year here, as soon as the season wraps up. So if you have the creative juices uh, and like to put together maps, we'll be having information in the MCP TTS Discord. So keep on the lookout for that. All right, on the top of the screen, we've got barrels here on the left. Uh, one size one crate there, size one crate there, size three crate there, uh, size four pipes, which is really funny how long they are. Um, and uh, that's it. So quite heavy terrain here at the bottom and a little bit less at the top, but one is a size four. Now, the crises, we've got the, um, the um, portals for the demons downtown are right down the middle, one, two, three. We've got two hammers also here on the left and the right. We've got a hammer at the very top of the screen and a hammer at the bottom sitting on top of the turbine. So um, very easy, straightforward map. But as you were saying, the deployment is going to be a bit of a nuisance, um, maybe even particularly well, for Trollborn. Yeah, I don't think it'll be that bad because there's no center extract. Uh, this I doubt there's going to be any kind of midline stealing going on this game. Oh, in fact, there isn't. Like you'd have to like i doubt we see bill eyes on the prize on like a side hammer mm. i mean maybe, yeah i would be surprised if that happened but i just feel like the game isn't gonna be that it's gonna not gonna care about points that much and wasting a card for eyes it feels bad when you can bring a bunch of defensive cards i'm interested in what defensive cards dion lord has into black order because i doubt he was expecting that yeah, I was going to say, people in the chat were wondering, because Trollborn has been playing pretty heavily on Midnight Suns, and he didn't play this um, at WTC either. But in his interview, if you remember, or when I was had him as a co-host, he was saying how he dumped out of Black Order because of team needs at the time. But Black Order is what he played like nonstop um, uh, until that point when he switched over to WTC mode. So he knows what he's doing with Black Order. Yeah, Torbjorn was a Black Order player before... Like he's played Black Order in the leagues before, made cuts with them. And that was like when people were like Black Order was bad. <laughs> before that was like yeah. with restricted gems before like after the nerfs or something like that. No one was playing them. So I talked to Huggy a little bit at WTC and he was like, Yeah, Torbjorn was like the Black Order guy <laughs> <Yeah>. locally. <laughs> so this will be interesting. Uh and so people have been commenting this was a last minute switch. So he probably, I mean, Dime Lord has been a solid Guardians uh, Thanos player, CGR player, uh, I think for most of the season. And he played them at the WTC as well. So I think Trollborn probably knew that. And so this is a flex. Cut out. Oh, can you hear me? Hello? Yep, you're back. Okay. I was saying um, Dime Lord it was, it has been playing Guardians for a long time in the league and also at the WTC. And Trollborn probably knew that. And so flexed into Black Order as a, a means to counter that. All right, so let's take a look at uh, Dime Lord, since you were interested, and see how close your prediction was. You were interested in the cards as well, but he went Rocket, Thanos, uh, Star Lord. He went Drax, dude. He went Drax and Groot. Yep, there it is. I called it. <laughs> ah, amazing. So no CGR tonight, everybody. I'm sure everyone's really disappointed. 
<laughs> by that. Uh, <laughs> then he took Deadly Duos, Recal, Brace for Impact, We Are Groot, and Fallback. So a couple of defensive cards, um, Recal and Fallback. It's probably the best he had. Uh, not not expecting Black Order. No one expects Black Order. Uh, we've got Thanos, uh, Proxima. Yep, sure enough, Zemo. <laughs> And Clorvis. So, uh, wow. The scenario is actually quite good for Turoborn uh, with this lineup, and he got the right points value uh, for this. Of course, he got to pick the threat value, but nonetheless. Yeah, so we see Torbjorn bringing one two punch. Man, that is a Sacri- little known card from the core set. Yes. I, I think- know you, you list previous TTS champion Ulysses, who won the league with Black Order forever ago, mm. uh, was talking about playing this card with Corvus just to give him more dice. So, so let's take a look. Sacrifice, no matter the cost. That's interesting. Hmm. Mothership, of course. One two punch. We'll come back to and fall back. So a few defensive cards, uh, quite a few defensive cards actually, um, and then a bit of movement and the no matter the cost. But one two punch. When the active, this is a reactive card. When the active character targets an enemy character with an attack, and the target character is within two of another allied character, those allied characters can spend one each to play and then add two dice to the attack roll. I think I think Pat Dunford just panned this card on a recent sleeve it or heave it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, adding two dice to Corvus is pretty good when he basically counts every die face. Mm, okay, maybe that's the niche situation where it makes the card a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, good, good so call. So Thanos, Thanos can desecrate, and you could one-two punch. There's a gain like four dice that will hit like <laughs> seven out of eight times. Mm. All right. Um, so far, we've got Trollborn putting his Thanos um, uh, just to the right of the middle because the wheel's in the way. Just to his right is Proxima, and Baron Zemo's much further left, but still quite central. Of course, he's a long mover, so that doesn't matter too much. Meanwhile, Diamond Lord's just dumped his Thanos quite a bit away on the left of the center line. Rocket's just next to him, and Groot is further to the right, but all quite central. Drax is flanking on the left, and it looks like Storlord's going to flank on the right. And then uh, Corvus Glaive just went down on the middle. So Troborn playing quite centrally focused, although he's got some long movers on either flank, so they can manage the flanks if they need to or want to. Uh, whereas Dime Lord has done a bit of a central thing and then two flankers. Makes um, sense. Yeah, I was going to say, any, anything unusual about this uh, deployment, but seems sensible. Uh, I do think it's a little... I probably would have switched Star-Lord and Zemo. Uh, uh, Zemo might have to commit a little farther ahead because of that size 3, I think it is, terrain, to get yes. the hammer. Yep. Otherwise, you know, Star-Lord is his flight, so you just walk over it. But other than that, it seems pretty fine. Uh, I mean, it's demons. There's not a whole lot you can do wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's basically pick up the flanking hammers and everybody shows up in the middle. Yep. Okay, Dime Lord's got priority, so he'll be kicking off quite soon. Mike, tell everybody about your podcast and how it's uh, rejuvenated, lots of energy ever since uh, the WTC happened. Tell us how to tune in and, and what you guys talk about. Yeah, so I the Danger Room Podcast is my podcast, uh, along with my other co-hosts, Sploosh, Deaton, and Chewy, and we do episodes usually every other week um we will be having the return of the christmas episodes next Woo! month so look out for that <laughs> love it uh, you've got some new goal... affiliations now since last year is that true yeah so hellfire is one of them right uh is there any other ones well winter guard did you have them Sentinels? we had winter guard yes sentinels okay we- weapon x was like the latest one last year okay um cool. i also don't know why yeah you might want to what's up zemo's moving medium for some reason on oh that's not zemo that's uh drax oh that's drax uh yeah i'm blind never mind yeah so cool so drax goes and grabs that uh hammer and is also nicely hidden behind the turbine so a nice place for drax to chill oh he was able to grab the hammer from the outside so no problem there cool uh yep and so just as we thought um uh, Zemo's going to use his long move to f- grab that flanking thing and see if he's going to go far away from Star-Lord or closer. It looks like far away. So, 
Not as nicely hidden away as Drax, but maybe a bit of cover, depending on where Star Lord goes. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. And you'll have the wild card unaffiliated uh, episode as well? Uh, I don't believe so. I wasn't planning on it. I think I have... So there's 24 affiliations in the game, if you don't count with unaffiliated. Okay. So that takes us from December 1st to Christmas Eve, and I think I have another plan for Christmas Day. So. Ooh, okay. This is so great. It's just like a, a advent <laughs> calendar. Instead of chocolates, we get a podcast. <laughs> yes. Amazing. No, I'm excited for it. I've been trying to make a larger effort to get people who are normally not on the in the leagues or on discords chatting a lot a lot of people i have like a lot of europeans um in mind that I, i've already recorded with so uh, i think people will be pretty excited to hear their opinions yeah it's great that you're getting that extra variety of opinions in here uh and leveraging all the connections that are wtc and i have to say that's like one of the reasons that we run the WTC for exactly this sort of thing, to bring people together, start making these connections for people that you'd never know otherwise. This is really great, Mike. Yeah, yeah I feel like I know a whole bunch of Europeans now. I'm like, oh yeah, I know this guy now. I can just get him <laughs> on the cast. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Tighter communities, diversity of thoughts, all makes for a stronger community and a stronger game. All right. Uh, looks like Dime Lord is desperately trying to shoot th um, Zemo, but it looks like he's just a little shy, so he's going to have to do something else, I think. And yeah, so he's yeah, I think I think Dime Lord probably could have hedged Star Lord a little more north. Um, would have mm -hmm. had the same effect. He probably could have got a shot off if he wanted it. So. Yep. Yep. So a little bit of deployment misplay, perhaps. And Groot then goes up the middle, but is actually uh, not contesting either portal, so not going to get incinerated. Leaves the hammer behind. Trollborn, moving his Thanos off. Yeah, the Groot placement is basically to set up bodyguard for Rocket, so Rocket can sit on the back point safely, mm -hmm. and Groot is an unappealing target to fish in because he's not holding anything. But he might still do it because getting rid of Groot gets rid of Deadly Duo and gives him a VP. Yeah. Grinstall was asking about how does it work with scheduling for these podcasts. But I have to say, if you're the host of them, you're in California, West Coast, which is a con actually, it's a many time zones away, but it's a convenient number. It's eight, eight hours difference. Uh, so like you go, you can kind of do stuff in the morning and then they're finished with work or vice versa kind of a thing. Yeah, exactly. So how does scheduling work? I basically just tell them, when are you free? And I will be there for that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes of the year, actually, I used to be able to work with a fellow TO in uh, Australia. In the winter, it worked out fine. It was 11 hours difference, which was perfect because as I was having breakfast, they were having dinner so we could have a chat there. The summer got worse because it was nine hours only, and so it kind of uh, wasn't didn't mesh up very nicely. But... Uh, Winter, yeah. Winters work well, so sometimes it works out with the time zones. Okay, so Thanos decided to move up, grab the hammer, and now and used his first action to move to the right, as you can see here. And he's going to um, place uh, Drax a little bit forward, and I think he's going to punch him. If... Yeah, move him uh, again. I believe, yeah, if Thanos still has a, has an action, correct? He I space jumped so. to grab the thing, and then he walked, yeah. Yep. Really looking for that wild here to push Drex forward into Corvus. Oh, I see. Yeah. Because it's an anywhere push, not away. It's a throw away, but throw. you could actually, you could hedge him into Corvus. You might even be able to get the no matter the cost range three attack round one. Well, uh, I so he gets the wild. He gets the wild, so the trigger happens. Uh, that's three hits. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, three hits. He doesn't have the reality um, into just one save. Drax, I think, has damage reduction, though, as well. Yep. Yep. And so he gets a uh what what token is that? A uh a vengeance token. Vengeance, yeah. <laughs> That's so good. It's perfect. Thanos and, and Drax. Talk about the thematic uh aspect yeah, this here. Is, uh, Brilliant. Lining up pretty nicely. Proxima can then spear throw into Drax and probably be on the demon portal, which is who you'd want you'd want her to be on that, I expect, and then uh, Yeah. She can just activate Corvus, and he might even have range three for no matter the cost, and then we can get the train rolling. Amazing. 
Hey, Poulet's joined the chat. Poulet, Mike, you remember, is the captain of the French team that was at the WTC. I will be actually going to France to the Abbeville two-day tournament uh, in the middle of December, 15th and 16th. So it'll be a little bit of Christmas tournament to round off the day of the year. And the boys uh, promised to take us out to uh, dinner, which is always going to be a good time in France. Okay, I'm trying to remember which gems uh, does um, Diam Lord Thanos have. Uh, I'll just go look. There we are. Space for sure. Space and something. Probably reality. All right, okay. so he's moved himself forward. Can you hear me, Norbert? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. I had some weird connection problems, but I think we're good. You're good. Space reality. That's right. So Thanos, uh, Diamond Lord's Thanos is more of an aggressive one, whereas um, Trollborns is more of a control-oriented Thanos. Wow, these are some aggressive Thanos moves. And quite early in the sequence of uh, activations. Well, we lost Mike. I'm sure he'll come back. He's been having a little computer problems. Let's see what... Uh, oh, he's back already. Okay. Okay. So what you missed is... Um, Diamond Lords Thanos is attacking uh, Trollborns. Oh my god! Four crits and a hit! Uh, oh man, plus reality. That's five crits! Good god! Oh my god! Oh, where's my whiskey? I, oh! It converts it to three, seven, eight hits! Eight hits into two saves. Oh my lord. Oh my god. Is he? Does he have a wing in it token as well? That would be just disgusting. Oh man. Oh man, Diam Lord's dice. I swear to God, whether they're real life or virtual, they are fire. El Fuego. That's six damage going through into Trollborn's uh, Thanos. I need whiskey. Oh my God. Mm. This kind of nonsense will drive you to drink, people. Uh, Diam Lord dice the living shit out of me at the WTC. I mean, obviously he played well too. Believe me, he did. But, uh, oh my God, it was just disgusting. I was just sat there just getting reamed. It was terrible. <laughs> That's when I finally got salty. I was really cool throughout the whole tournament, which I'm very proud about because I'm working on that. But once I held it together until the game was over, and then once the game was over, I just <laughs> I had a breakdown, total meltdown about these dice and uh, CGR and Guardians Thanos. Duh. And even Tommaso, okay. you back? You okay? I'm back. Yeah, my desktop's having connection issues, so I hopped on Discord on my laptop. Okay, you're cool. Quick. But I, I, you probably missed it. But uh, take a look at those dice rolls. That was uh, Dime Lord. Yeah, <laughs> good lord. Uh, you'd be really upset. If you're the Black Order player. <laughs> oh my god! Six hit points through. All right, so. Trollborn looks like he's trying to pivot and... Oh, what happened to Drax? Oh, Drax probably got moved by Diamond Lord's uh, Thanos. Uh, correct, yes. Oh, and he's still going after Drax, I guess because of the hammer. Yeah. Right. So, let's see what Corvus... Remember, Corvus has the reality gem on Trollborn's side. And... Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay. Oh sure. boy. <laughs> Damn Lord clearly has sacrificed the right animals uh, and other things uh, to the dice gods because they are shitting all over <laughs> Trollborn right now. They're taking a massive dump, <laughs> a lump, a dump full of lumpy dice. <laughs> Dude, his uh, his his growing nickname of Dice Lord is is true. Yes, he should change it. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> dice, Dice Lord. <laughs> okay so he's done absolutely bumpious he did one point <laughs> against against him now don't give up 
people, because I said yesterday I played a game which I got completely reamed by Rhino in like turn one or round one, maybe round two. I can't remember. I mean, completely rocked. It was 10 points to four. And I was like, God damn it. But I held it together, listening to our Lord and Savior uh, sooner, saying playing to my outs and totally turned the game around and won. It was great. So don't give up, Trollborn. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, man, getting spiked into Thanos, your own Thanos in round one is, is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we'll see. I do... Is Corvus in range two of Thanos? I don't think I don't he think is. so. That's why he went after Drax. Yeah, I mean, you could consider trying to put down his Thanos immediately, but then the Guardians player has, like, all of his activations to just kill your Thanos. So, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be hard. All right. Let's zoom in on what Thanos... Yeah, see, he was just out, so he's just going to have to... He's He gave it a look-see, but I think he's going to go back into the center. Drax is holding the middle point. Uh, nobody's holding this, the uh, flanking points. Yeah, we'll see Rocket walk up onto this this closed portal and pick up the hammer. Right. As if he wasn't disgusting enough. Now he has a hammer. <laughs> yeah, this is standard Guardians Demons play. You've seen uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, really good stuff. Did the movie you? was awesome. Yeah, it was really good. It was re Because it was different. You know, they actually walked away from the formulaic stuff. And uh, it was great because of it. Yeah, I mean, I love the hallway fight scene. It felt like the best, one of the best fight scenes in the MCU. Yeah, up yeah. to this point. Yeah, and CGI. So it's you know, sometimes those things yes. fall flat, but work out great here. Um, I should watch it again. It just made me feel so sad that I I didn't want to see it again soon, but now I'm tempted. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the bright side of Thanos getting nuked. He has a ton of power for death decrees. So. <laughs> um, have you seen the new Marvels film yet? I have not. Yeah, me neither. But I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. I'm. I've been a little lukewarm on the MCU stuff lately. Sure. I'm a massive Marvel fan, but they haven't hit the mark, so I'm just sure. kind of waiting. I mean, Fantastic Four and Doom are in the wings. So I'm just like, yeah. That, that'll be the new core box. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was, I'm, I'm commenting because I heard your podcast uh, with yeah. Sploosh. <laughs> uh, okay, so that was Proxima with Destiny Cree going up into Thanos. She's done, um, she did five hits. Good. Yeah, very good. Into no saves, so damage reduction helps, but uh, he's got four out of eight. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. Um, Lewis is asking about Loki. I only saw the first episode. I've been saving the rest because I'm going on vacation next week. Uh, so I'm taking them on my laptop with me or my iPad with me to watch. I did watch, going uh, I'm going to Lithuania where my wife's family is and where, where she's right now. Um, and we're going to go to visit a spa town there, a famous spa town and do a week of, uh, relaxation and spa, uh, treatments and that sort of stuff. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. I'm looking I'm forward sure. to it turning off the brain probably brewing up new new rosters on jarvis protocol <laughs> in between sessions oh yeah <laughs> all right so rockets moved up uh, grabbed the hammer as everybody said went to the point as everybody said and then is shooting proxima for defiling thanos in that manner how dare you uh, yeah, yeah of I mean, course look at his dice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is an eight dice rocket shot from the hammer and the death decree. Of course, you know, dice lord. Here we go. <laughs> Three, four, five. I have to count them. There's so many. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven with the Good winging lord. it now coming in. Winging it. Yeah, uh, was dead. It didn't help. So eight into two saves. Uh, nice try, Poxima. <laughs> uh, she does gets four. So she wrong? leaves them on one. What's uh, that? Seven. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Seven. Seven minus two is five. Uh, oh, she has damage reduction. Yeah, so four. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
I remember Deaton buying himself uh, Wi-Fi on the airplane. He was so excited after WTC to make uh, lists on Jarvis's protocol. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Lucas. Lucas is in the chat. Welcome, Lucas. Yeah, you you and Diom Lord know how to speak Dice God language because the two of you uh, were graced with their presence yesterday. Favorable presence. Okay, so, so that's... Getting, yeah, go ahead. Not getting Dice here is really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jesus, but we'll see. Maybe Corvus can double tap Thanos and Drax. So is this a husband and wife move happening now? Uh, I believe so, yeah. I think Dion Lord's going to want to try to remove. Like, Dazing Drax and Thanos would be ideal here. Uh, I think Rocket went last, though, yeah? Yeah, Black Order's got priority. Yeah, okay. Dazing, Dazing Drax and Dion Lord's Thanos is what I mean with Corvus Proximum. Oh, a use bio is in the chat. I want to mention that the uh, the Austrians, excited about their WTC win, uh, went full bore and put together a two day tournament in Vienna. It'll be happening in the middle of May. I'm planning to go as well. Only thirty two tickets though, folks. So if you're interested in being in Vienna with some very sweet people, um, look up use bio E U S E bio twelve ten, and uh, get the the rules pack with all the kinds of logistic information there. So I'm psyched to go to Vienna. And great, Mike, that you actually did some sightseeing when you were in Copenhagen. That's great. Yeah, I was in, uh, I spent a week in Denmark. So good. Uh, a little more than a week. Um, if you count, like, I was there from, like, Sunday to the next Monday. And I did, I saw a whole bunch of castles. I did, like, I did a whole bunch of sightseeing around the city. And I went, uh, I went to, like, the Viking Longship Museum. So, like, I even went to some places outside I saw the that. city. I had a great. I, that museum is great, isn't it cool? Yes, so cool. I know all the stuff you read about and you see in films in the fantasy, you know, realm and everything. But here you are looking at the real thing. It's so amazing. Yeah, it was really interesting. I Denmark was kind of like the home, like the origin of Vikings, I guess. And then I've also been to Newfoundland, which is like the farthest west they've gone. Mm -hmm. and you, kind of cool to like see both sides. I did. I didn't realize that you went there. That's an interesting trip. But yes, you're right. The Vikings came from norway and denmark if i understand correctly not sweden not finland uh, just those two areas yeah interesting okay here we are corvus is going to try to do in drax he has a hammer which is probably why uh corvus is doing the priority he's got death decree thank you guys by the way trollborn and dm lord are fantastic with the arrows really helping us follow along thank you god damn it what the hell trollborn what did you did you not sacrifice anything at all? Seriously? This is such a bad Corvus roll. <laughs> oh. He's got one, two, three, four, five with no pierce. <laughs> Drax lives with damage reduction. Takes like three. Oh. Uh, and he's playing fallback. <laughs> he actually can't. He has a hammer. Oh, he's got a hammer. It doesn't have enough power to play it. Ooh, let's see if they catch that. So if people at home, if you have a hammer, you need to pay one more power for any tactics card that you're using, whatever the cost is. Oh, it might, might, they might be letting that go. I, I assume that, how much is a fallback? It's two, right? Fallback is two, yeah. So it would cost three. It looks like Drax paid two, so yeah. Yeah, that's incorrect. Hmm. Four out of six hit points left on Drax, who's incinerated as well. God. All right, let's see how Troborn manages the second action of uh, Corvus. So what's the... Uh, are we? Should an accuser handle that or what? Well, I know, if, if they're watching anyway, but we'll see. <laughs> Omnis is saying, people ignoring the downside of hammers is part of why everybody plays it. <laughs> There we go. Coming back. Oh, Lucas is in the chat. Yeah, Lucas <laughs> might be able to figure that out. Oh, it looks like they're reversing it. Hooray. Oh, Ryson is mentioning that the Vikings came from Sweden as well. Um, however, they went east rather than west. And so they went down to Constantinople, which is um, modern day uh, Istanbul and Russia. Yes, I understood that, uh, Jake. I knew that the Vikings actually traded all the way down into the Middle East. Uh, slaves, uh, as it turns out, uh, amongst other things. But um, I didn't realize those were the Swedish ones. Interesting. Yeah, the Vikings were essentially just people who were really stubborn about converting to Christianity. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, Viking is, it's not like, it's just meant like an adventurer sort of kind of person. Like it meant somebody who left the village to go, you know. Correct. Yeah. Uh, it's just so happened that they came across the east side of England, which lots of juicy treasure and sheep around and not very well, yes. well defended. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Much better. Yeah, is this uh, this is uh, Corvus again back into Drax? I'd imagine. I think so. Yeah, Drax should be dead here. Blocking two Pierce damage reduction cancel. This needs to do what two damage? Yeah, he needs to do two uh, plus damage yeah, reduction. Yeah, Corvus, Corvus has got three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, no flurry, true, but uh, he has no one else to attack. Sadly, uh, so it doesn't really matter too much so long as Drax goes down. Yeah, I don't believe this was the spender. It was just a glaive's edge strike. Yeah. So, um, lots of probably just... debating now. Mike, where where did your family come from? Have you been able to trace your roots? Yeah, I've done uh, ancestry dot com. Uh, my dad, my my dad's parents are Italian immigrants, so he's basically one hundred percent Italian. My genetics say I'm like about forty eight ish percent Southern Italian. Mm -hmm. Uh, my mom is more of a mutt. She's like, uh, English and German, I think. So okay. ancestrally. Oh, I see. Okay. They're both very American, my parents. So, okay. <laughs> Would you say you're, you're, so uh, I'm going to come back to that. Corvus looks like he went into, with the second attack into Thanos and left him on one. Oh, was I, uh. Yeah, no, it was ah, uh, the chat yeah, helping yeah, us yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spender. I'm mistake. Yep. Spender and Thanos. Okay. Yeah, left him on one, which is a bitch. Um, that that role again was not the greatest. Good God. Yeah, and he doesn't have a husband and wife now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because because it does Proxima have to go first? No, but you just have to spend a power to do it. Mm. And Corvus is on zero. Usually, oh. you want to lead with Proxima because her power is a lot less valuable, mm -hmm. so she can spend to double activate instead of him. Right. Oof. I'm going to guess that your father's side then came from the Naples area? No, they're from Calabria. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, very far down. Basically the bottom of the peninsula. Yeah. Have you been there? Mm-hmm. Nice. I've been to Italy twice. Uh, the first time I was there with my grandparents. and. Uh, oh, that's super nice, that's Mike. From, yeah. That's super nice. Um I will then cajole you to come to when the Italians are threatening to put on a two day tournament as well uh, in the north of Italy, though. So I will insist that you be my roommate uh, at that tournament. Oh, fantastic. I Italy's great. I love Italy. I, I love Italy, too. If my family wasn't in the United States, I would move to Italy. Yeah, it's probably where I would live. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Um. I can't wait. I hope they do make it happen. <clears throat> That'd be Tommaso and the crew there uh, in like the Milan uh, area. Mm -hmm. That sort of area is where they're having it. Oh, apparently some Italians are already coming to the Vienna tournament. Damn it. I need to register it. Used by, now you're making me nervous. I don't want to miss my ticket. I'm going to make a note right now because I'm going to forget. So I'd be curious if Thanos has sacrifice range on Proxima. I'd imagine Torbjorn measured that, but Rocket could deadly duo here and just kill everything. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh my God, that's right, deadly duo. Uh. Yep. Here's the sacrifice. Okay. Ooh. I like this. Yeah. It sounds good. Thanos could easily move to break the sacrifice, but probably worth it to uh, burn the card. She should be dead from that. Yep. She only had one hit point left, which is kind of sad because, again, that kind of leads to the question about, you know, having her go first because she only had one hit point left anyway and then uh, doing the husband and wife job. So, not sure um, Jeroborn's logic there. We'll have to think about that when we interview them later. Dion Lord also had a wild there that he could have used to before damage throw Proxima. Mm. Uh, maybe displace her a little bit would be useful. 
Um, can also throw her into Thanos, and if he whiffs uh, all of his blocks, he would have died to the collision. Yeah. So. All right. Well, maybe uh, Lorenzo has the red mist in his eyes. He's just going for the kill. Oh. But it didn't matter. Yeah, Thanos, <laughs> that anyway. Oh, my God. Diam Lord, honest to God with these dice. And, you know, it would be one thing. It's like, okay, maybe he microwaved his dice at the WTC, and that's why he rolled so well. But this is the computer. Like, you know, unless he's got some sort of massive hacks uh, to mess with the dice roller. <laughs> what is... <laughs> he's Dice Lord. He's Dice Lord. He's, <laughs> he's a demigod of dice. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was, he's fathered by uh, one of the dice gods and an uh, unsuspecting maiden. <laughs> uh, this, I mean, I did say before the rosters got uh, deployed that having Thanos, having your own Thanos go last into Black Order is extremely strong. Mm. Obviously, Dion Lord's dice have been nuts, but being able to just dis break apart like Corvus, like Thanos can just go up and displace Corvus last. And then the Black Order Thanos is already gone, so he doesn't have time to put Thanos the course back. And it's having a bunch of guns with Star Lord and Rocket. And Drax is annoying to put down, as we've seen. It's, this is a tough game for Torbjorn. Yeah. Even if the dice were good. What um what uh how does it feel watching a you know old school Black Order game again, four years into this uh game? Um I think it's a lot more manageable. Obviously, Thanos can't portal everything anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think there's more tools in the game to deal with what Black Order do does, like this team. Yeah. Like, back when they were wreaking havoc, like, Black Cat didn't exist. Uh, mm -hmm. a, lot, all, like, a lot of the defensive tech wasn't around. Fallback didn't exist. So it's become more manageable, I think. Yeah. But it can be tough to play into. But it's just fun how the game comes around again to different factions yeah yeah i think unrestricting the gems opened this team up again yeah all right so groot's decided to move forward and take command of the situation here it looks like he's trying to avoid being on that uh, portal but within three of uh, corvus um <clears throat> uh one of the the, the viennese captain is asking how did you feel about the uh european roster makeups at the wtc compared to what you're used to in the states I think it was mostly the same, at least the people we played. Um, I don't think it was anything like all considering the WTC restrictions. Yep. I don't think it was anything completely wild. And I mean, Marvel has such a, like a tight knit global community that it's not super hard to find. Or I guess it's not. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is just funny at this point. I mean, I mean, seriously, Dime Lord, the, the programming skills are amazing. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is what happened to me. So dude. the one, the one benefit of this is that Corvus does get four dice on Death Decree now, but <laughs> okay. Uh, he's really ugly. God, you think he's gonna go for the tabling as the win condition? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> a big problem now is that Torbjorn Stenos has lost the big VP leadership, so he's gonna he can't really play catch up. Mm. He has to score points too, so mm. it's not good. Oof, Lucas, I hope you are getting all your sheep or cattle, whatever it is that you do, ready. Because uh, in a few days' time, the dice gods are going to have to decide who do they prefer, you or this <laughs> this this fine Italian gentleman with his sexy accent. What do you got? You just got a beard. <laughs> he says, "I'll be ready." <laughs> All right, Lucas, right on. <laughs> wow, Foyer, nineteen ninety six. He's saying this is like the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's nasty <laughs> uh, but true that was a really good scene actually that really helped you understand how how horrible uh, that uh, assault was I still, I'll never forget it when the one of the amphibious boats they just dropped the, the, the door down to let the people out because they beached and they just got mowed down by all the machine Dude, gun fire uh... straight away <laughs> 
that scene is insane. It's it's one of the best scenes in movies. Yeah. Yeah. It helps you understand how how incredibly brave that was and, and also how horrible yes. it was. Yeah, Matt Alex. Unfortunately Web Warriors just still have a <laughs> matchup holes. Uh it's rough. I'm sure Torbjorn would have preferred to play Suns, but Sons don't really help him into Guardians either. Blade just gets mowed down by the energy attacks. Yeah, oh god, yeah. All right, so that was um, Diamond Lord's move Star-Lord into the middle of the board. I don't think he is contesting. Nope. So he's just hanging out on the cover that is provided there. And then Drax, probably a pass happens. Drax decided to move back as well. And that ends those two activations, just leaving Rocket left to go. Zemo, Zemo's like, oh, <laughs> Hey guys. I guess I have to score points. Um yeah. So just like you said, he's gone to the middle point to score. Try to stay into and, and also get himself ready for the action next turn because this planks are are futile now. There's no need to be on the plank any longer. So the benefit here is that Torbjorn's models are powered up, and they're all injured, so they get plus four dice from Death's Decree. So, I mean, Torbjorn's not out of this game. No, no, no. He, he just needs to make sure things swing his way next turn. He's got to be, and he's good. He, he's not going to get tilted. He's super relaxed uh, as a person. Uh, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Torbjorn can daze two models, two unactivated models, and still maintain priority. Mm. So... Mm. And then he can remove them immediately. So uh, if the dice just calm down Tad, so he can get a Thanos activation <laughs> after Pro's Proxima, will be he'll be in decent shape maybe. Yeah. Uh, Segram is asking whether you think this is peak Marvel. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think know, it's actually a good story. Guardians. I mean, Guardians showing up uh, and taking out the bad boys of Black Order. Yeah, it's thematic. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's Thanos versus Thanos on Demons Downtown. <laughs> <laughs> Big dice pools, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Rocket is moving within bodyguard range of Groot. Leaving his point behind. Points are not the issue anymore for Diamond Lord, so it's not a problem. And he's good. Sure enough, he's going to shoot Baron Zemo. Watch Baron Zemo go down, Mike. Does he have cover? Looks like he does. Yeah. I think they're measuring that now, but it does look like it. <laughs> well, can't Death Decree. So, oh no, he, uh, no, he cannot Death Decree. So, all right, got the spender. I think the spender. Yeah, Rocket's going to throw full, full auto. Or would it? No, what? All right, talking. no blocks on Zemo. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Okay. Phew. <laughs> Still three hits though. Jesus. Oh, I guess he didn't have cover. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Guess not. All right, it still survives. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a round. And so uh, I'll take a look at the points. That's one of my favorite lines. It's kind of silly from um, Blade Runner 2049. When um, the main character comes home, uh, the, the, the uh, replicant comes home and his, his uh, AI uh, girlfriend was like, hey, how was your day? And he's like, it was a day. <laughs> she goes, how, how about a whiskey? <laughs> he's like, yes. Yep. <laughs> Good old groundhog day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking Tro the Black Order right now is like, yep, that was a round. That's rough. All right, so eight All to right, four. Let's see what can do. Eight to four. Choreborn has priority. Husband and wife, right? Yeah, it's got to make it happen. Let's see. He's got Groot online, but he really wants to go after Thanos or. Rocket, I don't know any of these guys. Uh, Peter, there's no gamma damage here, or do you saying he added damage because he thought it was gamma damage? 
I'm not sure what you meant. Was Demons downtown? So no, he's... there was there was no damage taken. No damage taken. Probably... <laughs> no, he's having a brain fart. He thought it was Gammas. <laughs> and so it looks like he's probably measuring some things to see if Proxima... I think he still wants to go into Thanos and Drax. Uh, probably measuring the spear throw to see if he can still get husband and wife and Desecree on it. So... Probably don't want a Desecree Proxima, though. It is once per turn. And that's mm. if you husband and wife, you still only get one. Yeah, the Corvus is way the hell away from anybody useful. He has a range three attack, though, right? He does. So you can go after Groot, but, like, who cares? And it gives him a medium advance. Yeah, Rocket and Groot, you can't really deal with right now. Um, you gotta, You got to get rid of Thanos, I think. Yeah. Um, so far, Drax, Rocket, and Star-Lord have hammers, so they are somewhat more priority. It's nice to have all these Americans online today. Fantastic to see Omnis here. Good old Friday, ignoring work. Yeah. Love to see it. Yeah. Keeping that productivity high. This is just really oh. to help you prepare for the work day ahead. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So Proxima decides to get ported forward, I guess. Or did she move? She did the spear throw into, into Groot. Oh, right. It places range one okay. after the attack. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So Groot uh, it's on three out of seven after that. For what it's worth, it does poison on a wild, and it doesn't look like uh, <laughs> Torbjorn is doing that. Probably <laughs> stressed out from dice. Yeah. That's okay, Ominous. You don't have to work just yet. You can relax. Work a little later today. It's fine. <laughs> Everybody's got their hacks for Fridays, apparently. <laughs> That's really funny. Everybody's explaining how they manage Fridays. <laughs> it's so good. Thank God for the workers. Workers unite. Four-day work week win. <laughs> oh, this is a good hit. Yeah, who's it into, though? I think this was a Proxima Spender into, I want to say, Groot. Because she has her pick of targets. Yeah, Groot rolled one die. It's energy, so he's incinerated. Makes oh, okay. Sense. Okay, got it. That was Groot. He's dead. Yeah, that should daze him, which... Uh, Probably leaves... debating a recal. Oh, recal I see. Here. Yes. Yes. That's a good roll. One, two, three, four, five hits against essentially no saves. Oof. Well... <clears throat> He's still thinking about it. <laughs> How close did you get to clocking out uh, in any of your matches? Not you personally, but you or your opponent. Uh, I think I want to say one game was close-ish. Hmm. can't quite remember. Okay, so he did recal. He did recal. Uh, three hits into one oh. save this time. So two go through, uh, which saves him. Totally saves him. Good old Recal. Recal's the uh, the worst. You, you're on such a high because you just like crushed the other guy. <laughs> uh, at Adepticon, I my opponent Helios lasered my Thanos for 13 dice. Ooh. Had me dead. Right. I recalled okay. it. Yep. I still died. Oh. <laughs> oh, sad. That's not how Recal works. Mike, you got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. all right so this is uh corvus uh, moving or porting it seems like a long it's like mothership mothership thank you yeah absolutely mothership because it was a long distance that's smart yeah. that's really smart because now he's in the thick of things look at him he's like ah who should i tackle <laughs> well probably going to be trying to hit some flurries here maybe we can get i mean see the thing is you kill three models you lose priority which i mm is bad so 
All right, so uh, looks like a death decree as well. The question is the target. Some hand yep, waving. Looks like a glaive's edge death decree into something. Probably Drax. You can build the most power off him. Oh, you're you're so thoughtful. I I wouldn't have thought of it that way, but yes, that's yeah. a great. You're farming the guy for power. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanos doing three damage. Thanos also is a, another glaive's edge, so maybe it's Thanos. Ooh, no saves. Oh, we, want, we want the big hit in tracks. Oh, maybe it's Star Lord because he's re-rolling everything. Might be plucky attitude happening here. Oh, fair enough. Uh, saves one. Oh yeah, Star Lord builds the most power, of course. Yeah. And he's at a VP. Saves one. Uh, still a shitty roll from Thanos. Uh, Corvus. Jesus. No, uh, Corvus counts blinks, so he's. Got oh, six. he paid for that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So he's wiped out. Uh... Star Lord's dead. Exactly. Actually. Yeah. Whew. Because he was full health. Actually. Yeah. Amazing. Yep. And then comes a hammer. I'm sure he's going to pick that yes. bad boy up. Now Corvus is going to pick up the hammer because of Mothership is used, so you're not concerned with him holding things. Got it. Oh, right, because you can't Mothership with a extract in hand. Right. Yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, this is what right. Black Order well, does. This is what you do not want to see when you're facing Black Order. You want to, you know, a fueled up Black Order uh, amongst all your, 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 your base killing your dudes. No bueno. Unfortunately for the um Lord, he pluckied into double skull, so his uh, <laughs> his wing token was locked out. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see that, that you know even if you have the curry the favor of the dice gods, they still like to toy with their human subjects. <laughs> so they're like, yes, hey man. <laughs> Guardians is slot machine M MCP. <laughs> uh, you have you been to Vegas? To gamble. Yeah, I've been to LVO a bunch of times. Been to to gambling though. Did you do, do any of the gambling? No, I'm not a gambler. Me neither. The only people having fun in Vegas are the people playing minis games. <laughs> the rest are all just sweaty and stressed <laughs> out. <Yeah. laughs> you know, if there were money and something more interesting than the typical games at like a casino, I'd be interested. But the games are just so dull. You play them for like 20 minutes and it's like, God, it's the same thing over and over again. This is horrible. Yep. So Torburn's kind of taking some clock time here. He's probably a little, he's probably debating on killing Groot or Thanos. Both of their activations are really concerning because Groot can walk up Spender, yeah. which is a stagger, and he yep. probably can just, yeah, it's not good. So... But killing both of them, if you were to like do a spender and try to hit the flurry, kill both, you lose priority. So it's kind of rough. But Rocket is an absolute menace right now. He's thrown, uh, he's thrrown some bones again. Um, I'm not sure who the target is, but it's three crits. Four crit. Oh, four with the reality gem. Thank you. Oh, fucking a rolls all into blanks. Good God. I think he's counting blanks, so it don't matter. Okay. Eight, nine, ten hits. All right, he he paid for it. Okay, cool, cool. All right. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but you know yeah, on the face value the dice are just terrible you know if it wasn't for that ability it'd be... oh he went at the thanos he wiped out thanos yeah so he's going to take a gamble on uh we i am groot hopefully whiffing <laughs> so just like, how do you get the spender. flurry the flurry is on the non-spender attack is that right the flurry is on the spender it is on a wild and a shield oh so bizarre but Wild this was shield. a uh this attack was a glaives edged death yeah. decree strike i believe okay or no it was not glaives edged i don't think or it was glaives edged but it wasn't death decreed because he rolled four crits All right. Um, well, interesting. So has he... Yeah, he's ticked her off. So Proxima and Corvus are done. So this is over to Diam Lord. <clears throat> he's lost Groot and... I'm sorry. He's lost Thanos and Star-Lord. Deadly duo. Everybody's looking for it. 
<laughs> Omnis is making a great point. Where in the world, uh, what, what kind of world are we living in where we're cheering for Black Order? <laughs> this, I mean, if anybody's got any legacy in this game, uh, which you do, Mike, you, you and me both, Black Order were hideous. We hated them with a passion. They're the worst. They, they were the worst because they broke the game. Like they, like, like not the yeah. rule. Like they broke the fundamental aspects of the rules. So, I don't hate. I don't hate a Drax activation here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. Uh, I'm listening okay, cool. intently. Yeah, my connection is so bad. I, I want to hear uh, your your wisdom. I like a Drax activation here because if Zemo runs in and kills Rocket or Groot, then you gain priority. And you could just have Drax put some damage into Corvus and maybe kill him. So it does have fallback though, so maybe not. It looks like Rocket maybe into Corvus. Not sure. You might just try to dice him off the table here. <laughs> uh, ooh, not a great roll. Two hits with a crit. Into crits rolls into a hit. So three hits into two saves to somebody. So Corvus uh, got reality gems, so it's three. Oh, three. Okay, three. thanks. Uh, a wing in it works into five hits. Nice wing in it. Jesus. Eight. Five hits into three saves. So who takes the damage? Corvus is on fire, so he's rolling two dice. Yeah. Takes one. Yep. Okay. Corvus damage reduction. Three blocks plus damage reduction. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Here's the deadly duo. Yep. Is he playing? Oh, yeah, he flipped it. All right, here we go. Who's first? Yeah, he needed one power for deadly and just got it. Thank you, Obsisicus. Sorry, dude. Uh, <clears throat> oh, God. Four hits. Rocket into Corvus. Corvus rolls uh, two saves with damage reduction three, brings it down to one damage going through, I believe. Yep. Good. And the next target, I'm not sure who. Into Zemo. Zemo. <laughs> Zemo does nothing. Oh my god, four crits. Yeah, Dice Lord. Dice Lord! Oh, five crits, why the hell not? <laughs> uh, lights out. Boom! That was the five uh, one shots and drops a hammer. Ah... Uh, <laughs> okay where is this hammer going far away it looks like keep it away from everybody else yeah just <laughs> give it on a give it in range of like a move for Drax so you can just be annoying scoring mm. points <laughs> yeah now Mike you used to live in uh, Colorado right that's correct yeah I grew up in Michigan lived in Denver for five years and now I live in uh, SoCal. Yeah. So Denver is full of um, uh, microbrews, uh, you know, uh, microbreweries. People is that... love their beer there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you a beer drinker? Yeah. I am drinking this at <laughs> 9 30 in the morning. 9 30 in the morning. Rock on, on it, dude. You are the badass. I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it must be, it must've been heaven there. All kinds of interesting brews that you're drinking and, uh, freshly made. Yeah, I was, I did, I wasn't beholden to being stuck with IPAs everywhere. I'm not an IPA fan. Yeah, me so, either. It's annoying being in other places where literally everything is an IPA. You know? Yeah, I know. I'm not a big fan of that actually either. It's just, it's such a cop out. It seems such a, such yeah. an easy way to brew. You know, if you don't know what you're doing, just dump a ton of hops in it at the end. Yeah. <laughs> and they're so popular. I don't get it. I think it's because people. It's like it's like people who eat uh, really spicy foods, like or you know, hot sauces. You know, they just it's just a matter of of machismo to try to eat as spicy a hot sauce as you can. It's the same with IPAs. Like how how bitter can I tolerate? Ooh. Omnis is a big IPA fan. He's in the chat, so uh, <laughs> I don't know. It looks he's... like he's uh, outmanned here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Omnis likes the IPAs. Tell us why you like it, Omnis. We, I, I actually want to know, because I mean, there are some subtleties to the hops. You can actually taste some differences in the type of bitterness, but overall, most of them are just disgusting dumps of 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 bitterness. 
<laughs> where the subtleties really don't matter anymore. Um. So Zemo died so he can kill Groot now. <laughs> you're, is, I love you, Mike. You're such an optimist. People say you're a pessimist. I, I totally disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I think I still like going with Drax instead of Rocket there. It's just putting damage into Corvus with Drax, and then if one of your models dies, like you're going to get a Groot or a Rocket and a Rocket activation or a Gain Prior, which I think I like. So, all right. So that was Thanos moving himself forward and attacking Groot. Only managed to get uh, a few hit points though, so Groot's left on one, sadly. Groot with the two blocks on one die. Pretty yeah. Good. Yep. Because that Thanos uh, using his uh, spender to get the energy attack off. Is that what you meant? No, I think he just punched him. Oh, he did. Okay. He didn't get the wild either. Yeah. Some no, no, I'm I'm lying. I'm lying. He, Groot rolled one die. You're right. Okay, so he spent the he he spent the power to do the energy attack, hoping to <clears throat> to take advantage of yeah. the weakened defense. <clears throat> Dice Lord, baby, one block on two blocks on one die. Yeah, like you do, like you do when you're when you're the dice demigod. <clears throat> All right, so this was a punch. Okay, now yeah, now we spiked the punch. Dead. Okay, good. Oh, Tatted Colossus comes to your um, defense, Mike. He says that you're not a pessimist. He said, "You met you in Nashville, and you're a super awesome dude." Well, I agree on the last. That's right here. Yeah, Mike uh, is a super awesome dude. Yeah, I um, sometimes get a bad rap. I think people just don't listen to the things I'm saying. They just assume <laughs> things. So <laughs> it is what it is. You you also have a tone of voice. I think that isn't very um, bright. Yeah. Let's say I think that's what it is. I, yeah, I get that. I had to deal with that at my job. People. People take the way that I say things. Right. The tone. The heart of what I'm actually saying. Right. Yep. Okay. So Thanos proceeds to move Drax out of the picture uh, after taking down Groot. Groot needs a uh, daze token. Otherwise, the thing is going to. Oh, somehow they move back. Not sure why. Uh... He's thinking about Mind Gem, maybe? Oh, is it Thanos already going and moving him back? Is that what happened? Yeah, maybe that's what it was. So, Diam Lord's Thanos activated, moved Drax back. No, Diam Lord's Thanos is dead. Oh, yeah, you're right. Huh. I'm not sure why Drax went back, but he Mind Gem Rocket. Yes. No portal on the energy side. He might side. want yeah. to save power. He's probably going to... Oh, man, if Corvus dies here. Oh, Corvus is fallback. He just needs to not be one shot. <laughs> but he's got vengeance dice. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, people realize what happened. Um, uh, Torborn probably wanted to mind gem... Um, oh. Or portal uh, tracks back and then realize he's on his injured side and he doesn't have that ability any longer. So they moved him back. That's what it was. Yeah. So then he used the mind gem to move uh, Rocket forward. And it's over to uh, Diamond Lord. Diamond Lord, uh, there's no more activations on Trollborn's side, so Diamond Lord's just going to have his way with Trollborn right now. Oh, God, if Corvus dies here. <laughs> so this is Drax with a Vengeance token into Corvus. And a hammer. And a hammer. Yeah. Uh, and the incinerated Corvus. <laughs> he is a Titan killer. Let's see what he does. Uh, that's uh, two saves. Not great. Oh, wow, he's going to live. Holy three, shit. Three three hits and two saves. Wow. Damage. Can you remind me, uh, Thanos has damage reduction to zero. Uh, Proxima and, and Corvus, they're damage reduction one, isn't that? That's correct. Okay. Man, this is a good game. Jesus. So I think the Vengeance token goes away. Is that correct? I haven't read Drax's card in so long. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have it handy? Let's look it up. Jarvis Protocol. I guess we can just look on in the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to move the camera, so if you can, that's great. Uh, 
after the attack is resolved, the vendor's token is removed. Yeah. <laughs> TG Lord is like, this is very unfair for Dice Lord, this, this dice roll. <laughs> Oh, that's Six, great. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, he rolled the vengeance dice. So, so what happens to the token? It sits there. It goes. It goes away. If he uses the dice from the vengeance token, it goes away. Okay, he's just spent a bunch of power. So I guess this is a spender now. No, I think it's a throw. Oh yeah, he's got a throw. Uh, he's rolling dice rolling though. Dice, yeah. Not sure. Oh wait, what? Oh, another bad roll. Two hits, including a crit, though. Not a good save, either. Crit, crit so rolls into nothing. Wow. Oh, no. Something. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Go on. My bad. Drax threw Proxima into Corvus as the very first thing. And now I this see. is the second attack. Okay. okay. Got it. Thank you. I didn't realize that either. Uh, not a good hit, though. Uh, ooh. Oh, no. Corvus is dead. Oh, did he? What? Why? He, Why? Two hits into a lot of saves. What happened? Or may, huh? Why Everyone else. Corvus dead? Anybody in the chat know what happened? Did not follow that either. Connor is also confused about it. He redirects his card again. Spender. Something about the spender. Uh oh, the spender has a wild throw. Okay. Maybe that's what it was. He threw him into the um, uh, turbine there and did the last point of damage. So he did two, but he blocks everything. He would only take one from the throw. Throw him into Proxima. Yeah. Which would be one damage. I don't know why he's dead. Yeah. I think he blocked all the damage, right? The hits. Yeah, I don't know. That was weird. I didn't follow that at all, but uh, I'm sure they, they blocks, did. But he has three blocks into two hits. Yeah. How is he taking the damage from the attack? Was it the throw? I don't know. The throw just does one. Mm. To be on five damage. He also could have just fallen back the first attack, so I'm not sure what's happening here. Yeah. Connor mentioned the same thing. Why didn't he fall back on the, after the first attack? Not sure. Maybe he didn't have room. This block is the throw dodge. Okay, maybe maybe I missed the roll for the attack block. Right. So the, the the dice you're seeing here is actually Proxima dodging uh, Corvus's rub. He only blocked one on the attack and took one, and then he got thrown by the wild. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, Connor's right. He needed to play fallback on that first attack. That might cost him the game now. Hmm. But yeah. we have an injured seven power Zemo who can add Destacree dice. Might just kill everything. <laughs> Round four. And um, looks like uh, these boys are wasting no time at all. Torborn is moving tracks forward. Yeah, he's, his VP is just real bad. You mentioned you're drinking a Sapporo tonight, right? That's right. Yeah. I had, uh, I like Asahi because it's so. Super dry, and I don't think I've ever had that. Oh, it's really quite good. Uh, very dry. It's excellent with sushi, which is where I usually have it. <clears throat> but it's very hard to find now. It was I found it towards the end of my stay in the states, but it's hard to find here. Uh, um, Asahi makes uh, something called Asahi Black. They're like dark beer. It is pitch black. It is so good, so delicious. Omnis, listen to me. Stop with your IPAs. And try to hunt down an Asahi Black, okay? And change your life. You might find it down in Los Angeles, too, because <laughs> it's very trendy. I'll have to look for it. Yeah, Asahi Black. Or just Asahi, if you haven't had that yet. But that's just a lager. Not that it's bad, but it's a, Yeah, but Asahi Black. Go for it. Dark beer is not gross. Oh, my God, Omnis. You need to go to school. We need to school you. Boo. Omnis, honestly, you you must have had dishwater that somebody dressed up as a beer for you because, uh, good Lord, there is so much dark beer that is so delicious. Uh, um, jokes aside, honestly, next time I see you, we're going to go uh, and hunt down these things so I can help educate you because this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm almost as mad as those dice. <laughs> we're all riled up. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Torbjorn had an out here by playing fallback. 
and then just didn't. Yeah, we need to ask him about he it. Definitely could fall back. Drax's attacks are all range two. He could have just fall back yep. outside of range two and still be in range for the spender to get Corvus back in the fray, and then he'll be on 10 power because reality gem, and we just kill everything, and it's fine. But not sure why he didn't fall back. Oh my god, all the IPA people now are getting riled up in the chat, Mike. <laughs> Even Steve okay to be wrong. My Steve, my teammate. <laughs> I have to I'm learning so much about my teammate now. <laughs> I'm not sure we can be friends anymore, Steve. Sorry. All right, so uh, Throborn is spending power on Thanos. Uh, this must be for Baron Zemo going into Thanos, I guess. I think he was measuring the Drax. Was it Drax? Okay. He is after Drax in the worst way. Drax, Drax is at the VPs. Yeah. And, oh, he's got two hammers. Yeah, fair point. Uh, no saves, though. And ooh, Fantastic hit. Ooh. Yes. Drax should be dead now. but And he also can't play fallback. So I'm going to put some hammers on Zemo here. Wow. That's... Oh, my God! Th Zemo is the MVP! <laughs> He's like, these Black Order people are overrated. <laughs> Let me show them how it's done. Uh, yeah, Sploosh just told me Zemo was the hero of MCP yesterday, so, so <laughs> proving to be true. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so he one-shots uh, a Drax like a, like a chump uh, and then grabs both hammers. Oh, and still has one action to go, which he's using a spender. Or maybe he's used the uh, thing where he could count blanks or whatever that is. Some some of it. Superpower makes him better. And let's see. Uh, who... Yeah, Zemo gets three rolls. Four re rolls. Okay. Yes. And um, what's up? Uh, so one, two punch does cost two on Zemo. I don't know if he's going to catch that. Uh, he should have built a bunch of power. One-two punch from... happened. Oh my god, he's going all in. Is he trying to take down Thanos? Doesn't... Zemo's power. Oh, he went to eight. Okay. Okay. Now, now Omnis is telling us the reason why IPAs are superior is because you can get a lot of them at gas stations. <laughs> Omnis. Oh god, this is. Is this six, seven, eight, nine, ten dice into Thanos? Yeah. Four re -rolls? I, I think so. I th I'm here for it, it too, Mike. I'm here for this. Is it 14 dice? I don't know. One, seven, eight, four, nine, eight. Ten. Oh, nine, ten. 11, oh, God, they re rolled them fast. Uh, Looks like only one save. Whoever it is saving. It's two. He's only taken four. Uh, And that's six hits. No, there's more rerolls happening. Oh, God, the rerolls didn't help at all. Poor Trollborn. These dice haven't helped. Six hits into maybe one save. Yeah, he's only taking four. Oof. Oof. That's a shame. That's really exciting. I don't know if I agree with going into Thanos here is a good idea. It's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven dice. I don't know how I think many you those try to remove Star Lord, personally. Only three go through Thanos. Oh God, this is the worst. <laughs> it's crazy when this happens. Thanos just tanking it away. Uh, yeah, Thanos uh, saved effectively three, so only took three. Yeah, people saying Star Lord or Rocket would have been juicier targets. Yeah, I think Star Lord having nine power is hit and run double spender. Like Thanos could just die. Mm. So. so this move is part of the spender. He gets to move medium, so he's going to go and take some cover on the wheel there. Yeah. Uh, I think Ominous is right. Uh, that needed to be a massive uh, spike for Zemo to really help salvage this game, and it didn't happen. Yeah, I don't think going into Thanos was a good idea. Mm. I mean, e even if, Cor if Corvus lived, then I think 
like from the fallback. I, I Torbjorn was like very much in this game, so I'm not. Yeah, yeah, agree. Despite the guys being a catastrophe. Yeah. All right, let's keep these mental notes for questions. <clears throat> Mike, I'm going to step away for just one second. Carry the cast. Yeah. So it looks like we're measuring range three to enemy Black Order Thanos. Hasn't spent any power yet, so nah, probably just debating things. I think Star Lord's got to be your activation here, right? Okay, I'm back. Or you just walk up Groot, spend her Thanos. Seems pretty good. Yeah, Steve. If it, yeah, if Corpus was there. Uh, this game was winnable, I think. Oh yeah. You know, on their backsides, they just get better, and they're all clustered up now. So he had his choice of targets. Yep, and you don't care about priority when you're KOing models like that many models. He could just KO like three models, and it would be fine. Yeah. Dom Lord decides to move group back into the action. Now contesting the center point. Here comes the spender. Spender, and he's going to stagger probably Thanos. Yep. Dom Lord is a fantastic player. Did you get to play against him at the WTC? No, we didn't play in Italy. Hmm. Uh, we played against two Swedish teams. Uh, you guys, Finnish team, and... Uh, there's another one I'm missing. Oh, uh, we played a Danish team in the last round. Nice. Great variety. That's great. Oh, God. Look at those dice. Oh, God. Honestly. Then I was taking six. I wonder if um, Dice Lord would loan out his dice to me. Like, if I could pay uh, him. No, he needs to win this. Anything connects here and Thanos dies? Boom. Dice Lord. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so so the key to winning is roll better. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say anymore, Mike. Uh, yep, that's lights out. <laughs> Lucas. <laughs> Hello, Lucas. You can try all your fancy strategy all you like. Uh, but if Dice Lord shows up with his dice, <laughs> you could be, your cleverness. It reminds me of that scene from uh, Game of Thrones when it was the the wasp. Was that his name? The wasp going into the huge mountain uh, um, western character. And he did all these incredible moves and he was flying around him and he's beating him down hamstringing him the guy was dead and then he just was going in for the final kill and then the the big brutish western uh fighter just <laughs> grabbed his head and tore it off and killed him Jesus. <laughs> yeah viper versus mountain thank you guys yep. <laughs> so lucas you're facing um you're the viper but uh you're facing the mountain luckus versus Luckus, Luckus versus Dice Lord. I, thank you for for your nine 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 six. That's amazing. <laughs> Lucas, he goes. Luckus versus Dice Lord. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> hey, you guys planning to have the uh, finalist, uh, the winner, uh, on your show? Uh. I don't think so at the moment because we have the back half of the core box review next week and then okay, we'll have the Christmas stuff. All right. Lucas is my boy. Maybe if he wins. I mean, do I really want to have CGR mirror on the cast? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be great to hear the winner uh, on a major podcast. So hopefully it'll get you. Uh, we'll get somebody booked in. Yeah. I mean, dude, both these players are great, but it's just more Guardians talk. <laughs> I know, it's not your favorite thing. <laughs> All right, Proxima trying to take down Star-Lord. Uh, not bad. Three crits into one save. 
Yep. None of them convert. No. Take one. Nice five blanks, classy. Puts a stun on him and a bleed. And a yep. poison. Oof. I think no, uh, this fish. is the first appearance for Lucas and Diam Lord in the finals. Is that right? No, this is third, Lucas's third finals appearance. Seriously? He's been in three He's finals? Lost twice. Yes. Oh, okay. Two before? Really? I don't remember that. He lost, oh. to, he lost to Magic Nick last year. Okay. And then he lost to uh, Joe in Season X earlier this year. Right. Okay. Got it. <laughs> wow. I don't think Diam Lord has made it to the finals, though. I don't believe so, no. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Let's see who handles the pressure of being on the final stage. It's all mental. Yeah, Lucas has been, uh, he's choked the last two final games he's been in. He had the win <laughs> on the board pretty much and then missed it. So. <sighs> oh, yeah. dear. Lucas. Lucas, um, we'll have to we'll have to get his reaction to that. Three times a charm, though, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call it the Viper versus Mountain that match, though. I think that's that's appropriate. I dig it. Yeah. Diam Lord is definitely uh, a, a mountain. It's just pure <laughs> brute force. Exactly. <laughs> you can finesse all around him, but don't let him actually connect, or else you're nope. done. <laughs> uh, okay, what's next? Rocket into Proxima. All right, Rocket, blow her up. Let's take this girl off the table. Oh, not bad uh, save. Not not good. Rocket is uh, slacking. Decides to go after Zemo I mean, instead. We're just, we're, yeah, we're just going into Zemo. Killing Zemo wins the game, so. Mm. He's got, uh, I don't think he has cover. He might be within two there. Yeah, correct. There we go. Nah, Boom. Six into no saves. But, oh, man. There we go. Rocket doing That's rocket cool. things. <laughs> Look, it's like yep. Mario Mario Bros. Bring all the coins flying everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, let's just go for the table. <laughs> we still got a Thanos activation to kill Proxima. Let's oh, go. my God. It's true. Lucas is very sanguine about his position. He says, if I win, that's cool. If I lose, it'll be hilarious. Very true. All right. He's not going to go for the table out of respect and uh, score all the points. Gentlemanly. Very gentlemanly. So Just gonna... score seven? Uh, yeah. God. That's it. So that's 18 points to four. Four. <laughs> right, Mike, let's join us, uh, join them in their channel. And um, Sounds good. I'll see you there. All right, everybody who's got yeah. any questions, please do put them in the chat. Um, and I'm going to ask the players their thoughts. Where are we? Here we are. Hello, boys. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Good to hear you both. Thank you so much for letting us stream this interesting game. Thank you for the stream. You're very welcome. Choroborn, we're just going to wait a moment for Mike to join us. Mike DeLuca was the co-host today. Sounds great. <laughs> we had a really lively chat. Everybody was super excited about this game and really interested in, in how it went. So thanks very much for letting us stream it. Um, I hope people had fun. I think so. I, we, we had a great time. I've been drinking a lot of whiskey. Uh, 
just because I, I think I had to with some of those dice rolls. So it was just a, a self-preservation technique of mine. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> Thanos takes six damage. Turn one on a six dice attack. Like that's that's dice that is painful Torborn, let's start with you my friend um you have been playing a lot of midnight suns but you f it seems like you flexed into your old um uh, faction that you used to love to play as you were telling me in our stream the other day uh tell us a little bit about your thoughts of how you put your roster together blade is horrendously bad against star lord and star lord factions so why would i play a faction with a leader that is bad yeah. against what I know my opponent is going to play. Yeah, yeah. So Black Order you chose, though, because you're familiar with them, or you thought they were particularly good into this matchup? They are very good against Star-Lord, and uh, so in the game before this one, where me and Diamond Lord was facing in the, like, in the Europe bracket, right. then I played Black Order, and he more or less did the same thing as he did here, where he went up with Thanos and placed him in front of Corvus, and then Corvus got to do his thing. Mm -hmm. So I thought, if that happens again, then I'm just going to roll better dice this time. But <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, I didn't. Okay, so uh, I was talking to Mike. Mike's in the chat now as well. Um Mike was saying how 19 is a perfect uh, point value because you get to play your your the, the classic Black Order characters and uh, Zemo on top of it. So, uh, and this scenario I think favors Black Order. So, were you feeling confident going into this match? Like, I feel pretty confident when I draw hammers. That is a very good scenario <laughs> for Black Order, right? Yeah. I pull in his character turn one, and then I kill them, and then I end up with three hammers usually. Yep. That is very strong. Yeah. No, it didn't happen th that way this game, but, you know. Do you think your opening could have been done any differently, or was this how you anticipated it going and the d dice just let you down? I think if I was a little bit smarter, I would have placed uh, Proxima on the left flank instead. Mm -hmm. So that she could be the one to like run out and grab that hammer and then have Seymour rerolls on uh, uh, on Cor Corvus's rolls. Yeah. But yeah, he rolled so bad that it didn't matter. Didn't matter anyway. Okay. <laughs> Earlier on uh, in the game, we saw uh, there was an instance where you had uh, Corvus a little bit further back and Proxima a little bit forward but you elected to go with corvus first and it um it, he didn't do terribly well but more importantly uh it kind of messed up the husband and wife play um do you recall that earlier i forget which round it was yeah i uh, that was top of round two and he needed to do four damage with a spender with everything and he needed to do like three damage four damage with a counting blank attack like those are 95 percent rolls and they didn't happen Right? Yeah, like, yeah. When you do hits on like six out of eight dice rolls, and you have reality gem, then you should be able to expect damage. But you didn't, you didn't want to roll today. That's yeah, fine, right? Yeah, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> it happens. Um, is there a reason though why you went with Corvus first in that scenario instead of Proxima? Uh, he had fallback. So if I went with the uh, Proxima did some damage, then uh, Th uh, Thanos could fall back out of uh, Corvus's kill plan. Right. And it's not like I can do anything with her anyway, because I'm only allowed to daze two characters, or I lose priority. Mm -hmm. So I'm not allowed to go with Proxima and daze someone else first, because mm -hmm. then I lose priority and then I can't kill Thanos again. That's that's what the whole game plan is here. Yeah. Okay, and I think the other key question people have been really curious to understand is later in the game, probably around three, Drax was attacking um, Corvus. Uh, and there were some throws involved and stuff like that. Uh, at what, it seemed like people were thinking after the first attack, when you survived, that you would have fallen back with Corvus at that point. Um, is that something that... Uh, what, what happened there in your mind? I have to kill Thanos 
in the like return there. So I have to gamble that I survive because if I don't kill Thanos, then it doesn't matter, right? So you're saying if you fell back, you wouldn't be in range of Thanos and then therefore couldn't attack him. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have had the power to do the spender and do everything I needed to do if I fell back in the like there was no like sweet spot there, I think. Right. So okay. I just had to gamble that I would only take one damage from a six dice attack. Right. But yeah. I merely screwed up Corvus placement because Corvus shouldn't have been on the back point and shouldn't have been incinerated for all these attacks. And that is that is a major mishap that I screwed up. What what why did you decide to do it that way then? What were you thinking at the time? At the time I was thinking fuck, I diced so bad and everything is bad and I'm screwed and this is not playable anymore. Right. But, you know, you can still eke out small wins even when the dice don't go your way. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that, how in the MCP the dice are such that it's it, you shouldn't really... It's, it's, it's hard. Emotionally, it's difficult. But try not to tilt and focus on the, how you can still play and win the game because uh, a lot of cha- times in MCP it still works out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Carter, I actually uh, like your. Uh, well, despite the dice catastrophe, I thought you still had an out, uh, assuming Corvus lives through that. Yeah, like Cor- if Corvus lives through that size dice attack, then I'm in this game, right? Yep. But he hit his trigger, he got his throw, and that was what matters. Um, and then I guess um, one last question was uh, when Corvus. I think no, it was Zemo. Sorry, when Zemo was attacking here towards the end game, you went after Thanos. Um, I'm curious why you chose Thanos opposed to perhaps Star Lord or Rocket, who were also nearby. Uh, ten dice attack with full rerolls. If that does nine damage to him, then maybe I'm in this game. Mm. <laughs> but like desperation, hail there, Mary. There's there's no good options, right? <laughs> like, I am ridiculously screwed. So you're saying the other two would have been more certain, but not really getting you towards the win. Yeah. Like, I, I, you have to I mean, do certain things to win, right? Right. Yeah. In hindsight, Groot just one shot Thanos anyway. So who cares? But he did that with, the how, yes, with help from yep, yep. Thanos. So yeah. Like, if Mike, Thanos dies, then that is maybe I can still play this game. Mike, uh, any questions for Trollborn? No, I um, I thought what you played was really smart. Um, I think I, I think I called the the squads exactly right before before yep. deployment happened. Yep, you did. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think um, I played some games with my friends with Black Order into CGR, and Corvus can usually hold prio on them and just remove CGR, and then the game is over. So yep. I like what you did here. And it's the uh, same against Thanos, right? You just hold right, Pryo, yeah. kill him, and then game is over. Yeah, I do think Guardians are just so insanely flexible that Dion Lord can just not play CGR and play this team, and it's feeling really good into your Black Order list. Yeah. On the on the flip side, which says a lot about Guardians depth right now. I feel incredibly favored here, but I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think it. it yeah, Drax is actually kind of a pain in the butt for you, I think. Your dice were horrible, but um, that is hard My... to say. You know, the, Morgan Reed, who doesn't play this game anymore, had a great quote of, the dice can make you look like a genius or a fool. So. <laughs> Torborn, any other thoughts that you want to relay before we move over to Diam Lord? No, I just want to congratulate my opponent. He played well. Yeah. He did what he's supposed to do. <laughs> Yeah, great run, Torbjorn. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Getting to the uh, finals or semifinals, rather, of uh, a, a TTS league is no small feat. So it's it's fantastic to see you uh, here. It is a very small feat. <laughs> I'm a WTC world well. champion in the VTC. <laughs> That's what matters. <laughs> right this on. Silly dude. little thing does not compare. <laughs> The stress of VTC. <laughs> Were you stressed um, at WTC? You, you're always so relaxed. Oh, 
Hell yeah. Oh, man. Like, that was, That's that your was superpower, so dude. That is your superpower, dude, because you look always relaxed and carefree whenever I see you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, no. Cool. I'm so I'll happy. Come back next. Yeah. You guys are going to hold the same team together, you think, for next year? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Target Target has been drawn. <laughs> Good for you, Torbon. Hopefully, you won't dodge us by losing the semifinal <laughs> next year. <Morgan. laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving over to Diam Lord. My friend Lorenzo. Hey, Lorenzo. You are in the finals, my man. Uh, yeah, it's uh, my first time, I think. Uh, uh, I know. Uh, I think um, my best before was uh, uh, quarterfinals. Oh, amazing. Well, look, uh, we were just talking about this on the stream as you were wrapping up your game. This is your first time, but you're going to be facing Lucas Schick from uh, Canada. He's He'll be here now the third time. Third time, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, if I remember right, we play. Uh, I played against him uh, one time, and uh, I lost. You lost against him. Uh oh. Uh oh. So look, uh, he, he. We have new new nicknames for the two of you. Okay. So your new nickname is Dice Lord, which I'm sure you know already. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lucas's nickname is now going to be uh, Lucas instead of Lucas. <laughs> so. Uh, we're gonna have to see who who favors the dice gods more. Do you have a, any a tips on how to appease the dice gods? Uh, because everybody wants to know. Um, maybe uh, usually play can be also a friendly game or or just uh, uh, matches of uh, others game. Oh, and, I see. Uh, uh, like uh, today, uh, I stopped when I got uh, a very um, bad luck strike. Right. In another game. Uh -huh. So 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 I arrived to the important match that uh, <laughs> okay. I luck need to compensate a little. I get it. Okay, so the idea is to play a lot of games, get the bad luck out, and then just stick with the good luck for the the real game. Yeah, when uh, when when uh, you get uh, that game that uh, goes very bad, you stop and uh, you're ready for the important game. <laughs> this is amazing. Right. <laughs> I've seen it happen. <laughs> okay um so uh lorenzo you've been playing this same roster i think uh for most of the league is that correct uh yeah i just uh, changed uh, like uh, two cards for this match oh yeah which ones uh, i put in uh, uh ice on the prize and uh, uh and uh no, maybe just one. So, what did you yeah, swap in for I said the prize? Um, Gal Galaxy Greatest, because uh, I was feeling uh, if uh, it uh, if uh, he was going with the Web Warriors, right? Uh, on my secure, uh, if uh, win priority, uh, my secures maybe got uh, like uh, cubes or something. Right. I can use uh, the the play with Bill. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised by the roster that Troborn brought? Because it's not he he flexed into Black Order. It seems like um, no, um, uh, not too much because we we played in uh, also in the season. Uh, I think uh, this season, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a similar game: uh, uh, Gamma or Demons and uh, Legacy Cure, and uh, we were on uh, sixteen. So it was like the the same roster without Zemo and without uh, Dax. Right. Okay. So it was uh, quite a mirror game in some way. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. So uh, so you saw his roster. You saw that he had the potential of playing Black Order. I suppose because of the way the crises turned out, you expected him to play Black Order as well. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And so because he was doing that, is that why you did not take a Cosmic Ghost Rider? Uh, yes, because um, uh, uh, I always like a lot uh, uh, Groot and Rocket against uh, Black Order. Why? Uh, Why is that? Yeah, because uh, the um, uh, Groot puts a lot of uh, body for Corvus, so maybe he can survive one attack. And uh, just uh, against Black Order, I try like to to spam uh, uh, to spam. Uh, my big health characters, so uh, 
like uh, he, he does the when uh, he has uh, the the priority or the right round to do the thing with Corvus, I can still uh, fight back. And uh, uh, my priority is always to to take uh, Corvus out, because uh, when when uh, I take Corvus out in this match, uh, um, the pot- uh, the potential offense of the opponent is very yeah, is uh, quite reduced. Right. And also you you eliminate the the husband and wife combo. Right. And yep. uh, yeah, because uh, it's it, 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 it Thanos it, it, um, has more uh, control, but yep. uh, without the uh, the reality gem, it's also a little uh, um, worse in in the fight. Yeah. Uh, so so if uh, if you can kill Corvus, uh, then you can manage to to win the game. Okay. And you were quite aggressive with your Thanos. Uh, I mean, he was uh, he activated quite early in the round and he was also halfway across the table. Was that uh, um you know, were you kind of desperate at that point or was this part of the plan? Uh, no, it, it was part of the plan because uh, uh, my idea was to to go with Drax here and taking the armor on uh, m- most far I can so he can uh, do the the trick with Thanos. But uh, uh, it's uh, a little uh, on the side, so he can't go there with uh, too much thing. Uh, also, when uh, he does that, uh, I go with my Thanos. I try to... My, my idea was to get uh, a slow and push on his Thanos, and not to do six damage. Uh, I wanted just to, to slow and push him away and get uh, Drax a little back. Right. So also... also uh, he can still uh, go on Drax a little, but uh, if uh, if uh, if Drax uh, uh, get the easier, uh, I have Star Lord and the Rocket that, that uh, can shoot on the on the on the killer of Drax. Okay. L- last question for me, anyway. Um, w- were you nervous at at all during the game? At, at any instances that you were concerned about? Uh, what, sorry? I, I was asking, were there any instances in the game where you're quite nervous about things, or where were you just happy about the the way the game was going from start to finish? Uh, yeah, yeah, the the crucial moment you you were talking about was on uh, the the drugs activation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I was thinking uh, um, uh, my opponent uh, uh, was forgetting about uh, Thanos that uh, was uh, on the injury side, so he like uh, he he he, play, he played the turn uh, uh, thinking uh, on then moving Drax, but uh, he couldn't because uh, he was uh, injury. Mm-hmm. So uh, so so Drax had uh, uh, the throw and one attack. Uh, I was feeling the fallback, so I I, I did the the throw before. Right. Uh, Corvus into Proxima. Yep. And and then I had like uh, uh, eleven dice, I think. Uh, no, uh, eight, uh, two hammers or were on Drax, maybe uh, t- like uh, ten dice into into Corvus with uh, blades. But uh, I did only one one damage or two. Right. Uh, so after that, uh, I could just uh, uh, move here and took the last hammer uh, to go ahead on points or risk uh, the spender. Mm-hmm. Was the the same number of dice, but uh, with uh, with the wild I could throw. So so he, he practically practically I was uh, uh, avoiding this reduction if I got the throw. Right. Because I just need uh, one on the attack and one on the throw. Right, right, right. And uh, yeah, there I got uh, I got lucky because uh, uh, I did uh, just a hit and a wild, and uh, he he blocks only one, so he, he took one from the damage and one from the throw. And Corvus died. That maybe was uh, the the last crucial moment. I think after that, the the game was uh, quite sure he won. Yeah. While if uh, yeah, yeah, if he can, if he can go first uh, later, uh, he can do all the things with Corvus, uh, and uh, he is he, 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 he was not bad, but uh, he's uh, still in the game. Sure. Mike, what questions do you have for uh, Lorenzo? Uh, I don't think I have many. I mean, I I like your squad a lot. I like the Drax pick. Uh, yeah. Drax is just a great dude to just stand around and be really frustrating to kill, which is all you really need. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I thought you played really well. I like pushing the fight into Black Order. I think if you play two KG, it doesn't work out as well because they can fish people in and remove that model and you can't counter strike them, really. So it's uncomfortable, but you kind of just have to walk in and start shooting things and it worked out. Guardians is traditionally a hard matchup for Black Order, so mm. I think pivoting to this was the correct choice. I think playing CGR would have been a mistake. Yeah, the, the roster with uh, CGR, uh, uh, I was seeing uh, it would be like uh, Star-Lord, uh, Bill Psylocke, uh, Cosmic, uh, and the one uh, 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 or, or Rocket uh, alone without Groot or uh, Nebula. But maybe with Nebula, uh, I had like uh, two pieces that can score. That can't score. Maybe yeah. on this map it's okay, but uh, a lot of hammers on the ground, so it, push, it, it can uh, hit uh, me hard uh, more. Uh, yeah, I prefer this one. Uh, this one. Uh, yeah, Rocket and Groot is frustrating for Black Order to deal with because they really need Thanos. Uh, Thanos, the like Corvus can't displace Groot, so and he doesn't want to be hitting Groot. He wants to be killing Rocket, but Corvus has no displacement, so he can't go into Rocket. If he kills Groot, you power up Groot, and then Rocket still shoots you. And it's, yeah. it's rough for them. And uh, also, he he can't go usually with Thanos first because. Uh, exactly. Then he, he risk to lose the, the combo with Proxima and Corvus. Yep. So just uh, he, he has to go to root. root. And uh, uh, now one little anecdote on Drax. Uh, like uh, uh, here in Italy, uh, I'm uh, like the only one that plays Drax. And uh, all the other guys are joking on me that uh, I always need <laughs> Drax in uh, my, <laughs> my ten. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think it's uh, quite situational. But uh, in the in the right spot, it's it's uh, it's really strong. He can do a lot of things. Uh, the opponent doesn't want to attack him, uh, and uh, he can be quite annoying for the opponent. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I think what Mike said, Trax is just there to be aggravating. Pretty much. <laughs> um, Vengeance tokens are annoying as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lorenzo, we're excited for you uh, to get into the finals. The first time for an Italian to be in the and, and for yourself to be into the finals. Uh, you'll be playing into Lucas Sheik, uh, I'm sure you know from Canada tomorrow. Any any thoughts about uh, your concerns for that matchup? Uh, sorry, any? I beg your pardon. Yeah, I like lost the connection a moment. Oh, I see. I was saying that we're congratulating you for making it into the finals, the first time for an Italian to make it into the finals. <laughs> but you'll be facing uh, Schick, uh, Lucas Schick from Canada. Any thoughts about how you will prepare for that matchup? Keep in mind, he's he's yeah. probably listening. Um, no, yeah, I'm just uh, um, um, training a little more. Uh, I, will, I will go to see the... Oh, the the last streams of him playing, yeah. just a uh, a little of study the opponent. Okay, good. Last question. May the best dice win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo, um, I challenged Mike, my co-host tonight, because his family is from originally anyway from southern Italy. He loves Italy as I do. Uh, we are waiting to hear the announcement for the first two-day tournament in Italy, uh, and he's going to be my roommate. So w when is it going to happen, Lorenzo? Come on. Uh, we, we are still finalizing the organization, but uh, it should be or, or, uh, in, or in Genova or in, in Milan. Genoa or Milan? Any any time yeah. frame, any, any quarter of the year that you're thinking about? Uh, uh, um... Um, I, I, I don't know uh, right at the date because uh, I'm not uh, liking uh, the organization. Okay. But I think uh, near the. Uh, sh I think it should be in. Uh, uh, I don't remember if uh, May or something uh, like that. Okay. All right. Good. All right. We're looking forward to it, Mike. If you if you know, I don't want to insult you, but if you know, Genoa is known for pesto. That's where pesto is originated from. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> Yeah, Hell yeah. <laughs> and it's delicious. I've I've been to Genoa. I've had pesto, and it is fantastic. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I know LAX has direct flights to Copenhagen. Um, okay, so maybe I can find something to Italy. We'll see. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Probably have to go to Rome and then uh, up to Milan yeah. or or Genoa. Yeah. 
But uh, it'd be exciting. I'm making jokes, but it would be actually amazing if you did come. Um, Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, with you today. Thank you so much for coming onto the stream tonight and giving us your strategic wisdom. Likewise. Thank you for having me. I had a uh, blast. Great. I'm glad to hear it. Tune into the Danger Room uh, this December for the 24 Days of Christmas. Uh, they're repeating a review of all the factions, one at a time, with various guests, now including European uh, uh, hosts uh, uh, on these things. So look forward to that. That's a lot of work on these guys' part that they put together, and it's a really great way to end the year and recap um, where the various affiliations are. Uh, so that's the Danger Room podcast on all the channels. And thank you, everybody, in the chat. The chat was super lively tonight and made a tons of fun. Also helped us stay on track. And thank you to everybody who's been supporting us over the uh, the season this year. It's been an amazing time. So uh, on behalf of Huggy Bear uh, and myself, I want to thank you all. And we look forward to the finals game. I'm not sure who will stream it just yet. It'll all be about timing and so forth but uh tune in for that finals to wrap up the year and with that i thank you everybody and wish you all a great day or night ahead thank you all take care